is the true reason for unbelief? It's a little bit of an add-on to my study I did on the sin of unbelief, uh, showing that unbelief is definitely a sin. So those out there that would say that you don't have to repent of sin, that you, you just have to, repentance means turning from unbelief to belief. Well, they're still saying turning from sin. Kind of funny. Um, but uh, what's the real reason why people are into this thing of unbelief? Uh, it's, it's not just ignorance of, the, oh, I didn't know Jesus died on the cross. I didn't know that. And I'll just, I'll go from un, unknowing to knowing or something. Uh, that's not it. Turn to Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. Again, that, you know, if you want all the other scriptures on unbelief, you know, you go watch the other study. But it says here, unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto, unto every good work reprobate. Okay? That's funny. I saw somebody in the comments here not long ago. They said that the new versions are okay because, see, they're saved and therefore they're pure. So unto the pure, all things are pure. So, because they're pure and saved, then the new versions are pure. Well, that's brilliant. I mean, you can take that with anything then. Um, under the pure, all things are pure. Well, I'm purely saved, so alcohol is pure. Pornography is pure because I'm pure, so it's pure. <laughs> uh, no, that's stupid. And, of course, you know, I wrote back and I said that you're not saved to this person. And they said, okay, give me one verse of Scripture that condemns new versions or condemns adding to or taking away from Scripture. And I'm going, that's what the whole study was about. Typical. But uh, time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You know? But look at this. Under the pure, all things are pure. All right? Uh, the Lord's going to show you what's pure. His word is pure. Okay? This word, this book has purity to it. It's been purified seven times, according to back there in the book of Psalms. This word is pure. And you look and you can see and your life gets sanctified as your life becomes more and more sanctified as you get older as a Christian. Um, there's a lot more purifying that goes on. Under the pure, all things are pure. The Lord will show you those things. He'll show you the things that you need to clean up in your life and purify. Okay. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Doesn't really matter. What's what's the big deal? I wouldn't make a big deal about uh, somebody cussing or somebody drinking or, or you know watching a little bit of dirty movies once in a while. You know that's not going to keep you out of heaven. And blah, blah, blah. why? They're defiled and unbelieving. You see, they're unbelieving because they love darkness rather than light. That's why they don't believe in Jesus Christ dying for their sins, for their sins. You see, when you understand that Jesus died for your personal sins, it makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel condemned and you say, oh, wow, you know, I'm sorry about that. Oh, you know, and you want help forsaking those sins. You want a new life, you see. That's what true belief is. They don't want to do that. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Yeah, I've run into that for years and years and years. A lot of these people, these, these uh, easy believism heretics and whatever else, these lost people that they have a profession, they, they say I'm a Christian and whatever else, and yet their mind and their conscience is defiled. You know, it's so funny. I mean, I've gotten this with the followers of Stephen Anderson. I've gotten it with the followers of, of uh, Robert Breaker. A lot of these fakes, um, they'll, oh, I, you know, they'll talk so nice and we're praying for you and I'm just so concerned about the direction that you're going and blah, blah, blah. And you make them angry and they will cuss just like a sailor. They'll cuss like any other lost person out there. Why? Uh, their mind and conscience is defiled. You say, well, let's just talk about lost people. Just talking, the unbelieving is just lost people. No, it isn't. Verse 16, they profess that they know God, but in works, they deny him. It doesn't say they profess that they know God and that's good enough. As long as they have belief, as long as they make a profession of faith, that's all that matters. You don't judge them according to their works. You don't, you don't judge their life. It's not what's going on here. They profess that they know God. But in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Yeah, perfectly describes these people. 
They'll get mad because uh, you preach a sermon against profanity. They'll get mad because you preach a sermon against watching television or any number of other things. Yeah. Their profession means nothing, in other words. And I've been saying that for years. I've been preaching that for years and years and years, and people say it's Lordship Salvation. Um, I find that funny because Lordship Salvation is not a Bible term. It's a thing that they add to Scripture. You have to add that thing to Scripture. There's nothing in the Bible about Lordship Salvation. And you can define it any number of, of ways. See? Again, think of the Catholic undertone there. The Holy Scriptures, the Sacred Scriptures, are not enough, so we have to add to the Sacred Scriptures with our tradition. You see? They're not Bible-believing Christians. They have to say, well, that's Lordship Salvation. There's no such term. How do you define it? They define it. So, not going to go over many scriptures in this thing. There's a whole bunch of, I mean, just it's not just the word unbelief that you can go through all the references like I did in my other study, but just go to the thing of, you know, that they didn't believe or, you know, unbelieving, or there's a lot of other verses like that, just verse after verse after verse. And, um, you know, it, I just, a lot more I could say, but I'm not going to go off on a big thing. I got a bunch of other videos to do today, but I found this video. Um, I might do a, you know, actually just going through the thing um, and showing just the funny, ridiculous nonsense that this woman was saying. But this video of this former mega church pastor that uh, turned atheist, and um, you know, and she's she was part of some big thing, and they toured her and her husband were touring all around. I guess they were famous. I've never even heard of them because I've been away from the whole modern church thing for many years now. Praise the Lord. But, uh, you know, it turned out later on that, that they went atheist. Now, and they're, they're now, you know, skeptics and enemies of Christians and whatever else, you know. And, uh, but this is literally, I'm going to put the screenshot from the video. Okay, this was the picture, the thumbnail picture for the video. And I thought, no, I got to see this. And it's in the video. And I took a, I paused it and actually took a screenshot of it. Here it is. I'll put it right here. And it says, I found unbelief through pastoring a megachurch. How about that? A professing Christian. She professed that she knew God, but in work she denied Him. And it was all, you know, I was there and I was having such a, a struggle with my conscience and things. I didn't stop her from taking people's money, the gullible people that go to these big megachurches. And, uh, but, you know, she's so heroic now, you know, that she's come out in support of atheism and, and, and against organized religion. She's a wicked woman, a wicked, deceived sinner, going to charismatic churches and things. Again, I might come out and do a, a whole video on the thing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but it just cracks me up. Professing Christian, but she found unbelief. How about that? 